Hello everyone, this is Miss Twinkle May Bungay and I will be your teacher for Hope for Physical Education subject. Let me introduce our first lesson for Hope for. We have recreational activities and health related fitness. Our main objective for this unit, we are going to self assess health related fitness status barriers to physical activity assessment, participation, and one's diet. Let me enumerate our specific objectives for today's lesson. One, we are going to discuss the nature and background of recreational activities. Two, define outdoor recreation. Three, we are going to cite examples of outdoor recreational activities. Fourth, we are going to recognize the benefits of recreational activities. And lastly, we are to enumerate the Leave No Trace 7 principles in doing outdoor activities. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the whole session. Before we start our um, discussion, we are going to have a word game. So get a piece of paper, any scratch will do, and let's do this game. You're going to copy the word game below or on the next slide um, and write those letters in a separate sheet of paper and you are going to look for the names of recreational activities which can be done in our country philippines and you are going to mark your answers by encircling your found words okay so copy these letters in the scratch paper and you are going to find five Examples of recreational activities. You only got 30 seconds for this one. you are done with this word game. So, anong nakita nyo? Anong recreational activity ang nakita nyo? We have five. Okay. We have here um, kayaking. We have here camping. And this one, surfing. Ayun. And hiking. Ilan na ba? Kayaking, camping, surfing, hiking, and... What else? Eto, fishing. Ayon. Okay, so what was your um, initial reaction to this activity? Did you experience some of the listed outdoor recreational activities? I hope you did one of this. You experienced one of this. Kung hindi, ang, ang lungkot naman ng buhay nyo, mga bebe ko. Uh, okay, so yeah, those are examples of outdoor recreation. Now, according to Klein R. Jensen, 2006, meron tayong <coughs> that long parts ng time. So, let us break down the ideas to have a common understanding of the terms. Gusto ko may matutunan kayo sa subject ko, okay? So, we have existence time, subsistence time, and free time. When we hear the word free time, what does it mean to you as a student? No klase? Walang klase, mamo na among free time. Mao ba? Bitaw, that's correct. So, kana gyud ang pinakauna nga mo, mo moabot sa utak sa estudyante no when we say free time, walay klase, ma'am. <laughs> okay, but uh, consequently, we will be able to use the word free time to do the things which we wanted to do but have been able to do so because of the lack of time. 
no? Unsa may maka lack of time na to tungod sa atong homework, projects, um or perhaps going out with friends to watch a movie, no? So a day can be divided into three parts daw. Ingon si Klein R. Jensen, year 2006. He specified, a day can be divided into three parts. The existence time, subsistence time, and free time. When we say existence time, it is the time spent for biological needs. Like, having a meal, pagkain nyo, pagtulog nyo, taking a bath, yon. Yon yung mga tinatawag natin existence time. When you spend yourself to your biological needs. When we say subsistence time, it refers to the hours spent for economic purposes. Ano yung mga examples ng economic purposes? Going to work, doing your um, chores in the house. For you students, your hours spent in school. That is called subsistence time. Okay, any any doings na makapagpapalago ng ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, ng lungsod, ng tagbilaran, yun yung subsistence time. Okay, ano naman tong free time? When we say free time, it is all the remaining time after doing subsistence time and existence time. Ma'am, unsa on mo pag-ingon nga free time na nimo, free time na nako. You know what? Free time varies from one person to the other. Perhaps to those who have been very busy with workload or schoolwork, this is the best time to do recreational activities. You have to relax, guys. You have to rejuvenate. Ma'am, hindi kaila, hindi wala talaga akong time, ma'am. Meron tayong lahat. May time tayong lahat. Okay? It depends on how we chunk our time. But wag niyong kalimutan na magpahinga. No? Ang gulo na ng mundo, ang ingay na ng mundo, makinig naman kayo sa nature. Okay? So, what is recreation? So, those are the... Um, parts of our time according to Jensen 2006 what is recreation from it's from the word itself recreation it is derived from the Latin word recreare recreare which means to be refresh choices for recreation vary from person to person Nasa atin yun, kung ano yung, um, ano, self-explanatory, you know. What makes one happy may not be so for others. No? So, for example, parang nahahappy ako na mag-beach today. Ah, parang hindi ako happy na mag-beach today. I'll grab some coffee na lang in the restaurant. Okay? It, it really varies from person to person. It depends on one's interest. It depends on your own pursuits. It depends on your own needs, which may be reflective of one's beliefs or our level of gratification. No? So that is recreation. Now, I want to ask you guys, before we proceed to the other um, question, why do people engage in outdoor recreational activities? Reflect on yourself. Why do you like to do outdoor recreational activities? Some do it for personal satisfaction and enjoyment. It is a time away from the day-to-day uh, -day routine, okay, house, school, work, then house, then work, then school. Ano yun? No? Especially to those um, people who are residing in highly urbanized areas. For example, Tagbilaran City. But many do it for personal pursuits such as photography, 
such as collecting paintings, collecting seashells, reaching the top of Mount Apo, uh, attaining a fitness level. So it really depends on our um, belief, on our personal gratification as individuals. Some groups do it as part of outdoor or environmental education, such as um, naming of the plants, no? such as bird watching. Whatever reason they may be, people engage in outdoor recreational activity for their own sake, for their own pleasure, voluntarily, and of their own choice. So, in this unit, different outdoor recreational activities will be presented and discussed to encourage you to start living a more active lifestyle that will contribute to your overall wellness i hope after this activity on the weekend you will um like um aya make aya to your friends like oh bitch naman tayo ganun na ka pahinga naman kayo guys okay what is outdoor recreation so philippines is really rich in natural resources despite being your a small country no but we are surrounded by all kinds of land formations and natural water resources ang ganda ng pilipinas no it has been listed in the world factbook as having the fifth longest coastline in the world its natural environment has so much to offer especially here in bohol no mapabukid mapa beach ang ganda ng bohol mind you whether on land, whether on water, or even in air. So, how about you? If you are going to define rec outdoor recreation, okay, so outdoor recreation or outdoor activity, so it refers to recreation engaged in out of doors, labas ng bahay nyo. Mostly commonly, a uh, most commonly in natural settings. It depends on the physical environment they are being um, carried out in. What are the examples? Fishing, backpacking, horseback riding, many more. Basta magagawa nyo. May enjoyment kayo na gagawa nyo sa labas, outdoor activity yon. It's kinda a broad concept, man, good. So, uh, it encompasses a varying range of activities and landscapes. Okay. May tinatawag tayong active recreation and passive recreation. When we say active recreation, these activities... Uh, requires a lot of energy and movement. Magagamit talaga yung um, body mo be. May sweat talaga sometimes pag ginagawa mo to. Oh, from its word, active. When we say passive, it involves limited physical exertion. What are the examples of active and passive recreations? These are the examples. Active recreation, we have volleyball, basketball, paintball, and the list goes on. When we say passive, limited physical exertion, reading, painting, photography, no? walang, walang masyadong sweat. Hindi active yung katawan mo. Yun yung passive recreation. When we say indoor, no, it can be done outside, uh, inside a house, a building, bowling, badminton, etc. When we say outdoor, carried out in the field or outside a space, outside your house, outside the school. So these are examples of outdoor recreational activity what are the health benefits of outdoor recreation ano pa, para saan ba to pa, para saan no? what outdoor recreation can give us wait for a while okay okay Number one, we have 
It improves your mental well-being. Paano? Okay. Your mental well-being greatly improves when you exercise outdoors. No? So, nakita ko, may some of the students na um, after school, nagja-jog sila in, uh, in Holy Name University, which is a great... Uh, oh, gusto ko yun. Gusto ko yun. It's a great, like, great activity to improve yourself, to improve your mental well-being. One of the reasons for this is the awareness that your mind has throughout the exercise. Ma- makikita niyo yung focus sa inyo. May improve mo pa yun. Okay? Especially, especially with the changing weather. Unlike in the gym, sa gym and God, the floors are flat and benches evenly pos- positioned. No? The terrain outdoor includes hills, may mga woods, valleys, no? So, you are forced to be focused and alert at all times, and that alone benefits your mental health. The mental health benefits of being outside in general are exponential, and there is an array of options that um, you can choose to spend your time doing. No? So it really improves our mental well-being. Second one, best way to get vitamin D. Ayan. So, your bones and blood cells need a lot of calcium, a lot of phosphorus, and vitamin D for them to be healthy. No? So, your bones, minsan, ka, minsan pag sumasakay ako ng jeep, gustong gusto ko yung nasa window ako para matamaan ako ng sunlight at 7 kasi 6 ako po, like, yeah, 6 ako lumalabas ng bahay. So, ang ganda pa ng ano, ng sun, yung rays ng sun, hindi masyadong masakit sa skin. So, I hope you will do, you know, working out under the sunlight. It helps your body to absorb these minerals seamlessly. Also, getting 5 to 15 minutes of sun at least once every 2 days gives your body all the vitamin D it needs. Okay, that uh, the bones really need the vitamin D. Third one, we have boost self-esteem. So, your self-esteem increases exponentially when you spend time with friends doing different outdoor activities. This effect is particularly strong when you spend time near water, mag-beach kayo, near green areas, mag-picnic kayo, and within sounds of nature such as the waterfalls, the birds, you know, walking along nature, the gardening, you know, or other physical activities. So, those are really important for your esteem as well. Playing with guns or laser guns, that is another worthy activity as it gives you a renewed sense of accomplishment, which is a major confidence boost. Wow, Murag. Grabe, one mile na akong nadagan diri sa koan. Hmm, e nga na. It can really boost your self-esteem. Promotes memory. Fourth is promotes memory. Ano ni abot man si memory? Ano? Oy nga, recreational activity raman ni. Eh. Nature work Nature walks have shown a significant relevance in memory retention among humans. Walking around sa mga kahoy, for example, no, it promotes your memory by more than 20%. So, mag-nature walk na kayo. Stress reduction effects. Do you know the word cortisol? Oh, search it. Cortisol is the hormone that indicates the level of stress in humans. It reduces greatly when you spend time in the forest. It reduces when you spend time watching your bebe, watching the birds, and taking part in low-intensity outdoor activities. For example, camping in the woods. No, It is far much better activity than spending time in the city, especially for those people who suffer from anxiety and depression. It has also been scientifically proven that people who spend more time in the wild have a better heart rate, 
than those who spend hours sitting in front of your TV, in front of your computer, the traffic in the city, you know. So, it can really reduce our stress. Another benefit reduces anxiety. Uh, sa may mga anxiety dyan, hmm, makinig kayo. As we have mentioned earlier, something about the outside calm down our anxious mind. You will attest to this fact even if you are not fond of going out, you have experienced the calming nature of Mother Earth. Even if it is through a house plant or just a picture of nature. You know, it's nice something. Nice something sa atong Mother Nature. Many offices nowadays have nature wall arts hanging on the office walls. Kabantay mo? So, it can really calm down our angry, ang our angry, angriness, our stress, our anxious employees. If that works, then you can imagine the significance of being in the presence of the waterfall or any other mountain you see in the office wall art. Nevertheless, if you continue having anxieties and the episodes do not stop, you can hire the services of a life coach training who can provide assistance and who can provide in helping you find calmness. Okay? So, kung dili gihapon siya effective para sa inyo ha, wala gihapon na reduce ang anxiety, you can um, contact someone who is professional for that. Seventh um, benefit, improves the quality of your sleep. Ayan, sa mga natutulog ng 1am, 2am, oh, baka ito na yung sagot. No? <laughs> your sleep cycle is really dependent on the accurateness of your internal clock. If the clock isn't working right, it's what you call body clock. So, you will have a hard time regulating your night sleep. Kaya saan mo work atong body clock? The clock works right when the cells in your eyes get enough sunlight during the day, particularly before midday, particularly before tw before 12 noon. Yeah, before 12 noon. That is why you need to be out as many minutes as possible in the morning hours. This requirement becomes more important as you get older. Okay? So, um, at 10 a.m. murag sakit na masakit na sa ano masakit na sa panit ang ang sunlight so do it at 6 a.m. 7 a.m. going to 8 kahit 8 nga masakit na sa skin di ba no so yeah improves the quality of your sleep eight benefit boosts your immunity again morning sunlight boosts your vitamin D levels the more the vitamin D your body gets, the stronger its immune system becomes. So, recreational activity can really boost your immunity. On top of that, being within outdoor plants, it helps you leverage the health benefits of the um, phytoncytes. We will not dig bigger on that, you know, and other organic compounds that plants produce. These compounds boost immune function in the humans. So, dapat talaga may ano tayo, may time tayo for the plants, may time tayo to expose ourselves outside to have or to get vitamin D. It really boosts your immunity. Number nine, helps burn some unwanted fats. So, when you play outside, let's say, while out doing water activities, you burn tons of calories and unwanted fats. And because being outdoor during the day, it helps you to sleep better. Coupled with the fact that better sleep facilitates faster weight loss. So, makinig kayo sa mga 3 a.m. ano dyan, 3 a.m. na natutulog ng 3 a.m. Uh, Better sleep facilitates faster weight loss. The role of outdoor time in your physical fitness can never be overemphasized. 
It really helps burn some unwanted fats. Walking in the nature, it helps some unwa- uh, burn some unwanted fats. And the line is, you know, we have so many recreational activities to, you know, to be done outside. Other benefits, we have social, economic, spiritual. Outdoor activities are ways for families to become closer. I'm talking about social benefits. Pwede na siya ang family bonding activity. Oh, uh, tawagin mo mama, ma, mag-beach naman tayo. Walay, walay, walay kwarta, mom. Hala, it's free. The beach is free. Okay, so spending time outdoors allows one to meet and interact with others who share the same passion for outdoor recreation. Nice food ang pag-participate sa mga teams which will help form lasting friendship and develop a community. Okay, so that's another so, uh, social benefits of outdoor recreation. When we say economic benefits, people who have a relaxed body and mind tend to be more productive at work. Do you agree? Or to be more productive at school. No. Kung sa may gi pa kuan diri gi pa message ani. This translates into the efficiency at the workplace. So if you are anxious, if you are stressed, dili ka kalihok og tarong, dili ka katrabaho og tarong, dili ka kaskwela og tarong, no? So it's really um it's really true that economic will be benefited uh, to uh, um, from outdoor recreational activities. It's more fun in the Philippines, no? Ingon ang Department of Tourism. That's the slogan. That's the slogan of the OT. Indeed, it is more fun as well for everyone involved in the ecotourism activities in the Philippines. It has been really rewarding for the local folks as ecotourism in our country created jobs and other economic activities which have one way or another contributed to our economic growth oh, chocolate hills um cha the chap cham basta sa carmen oh, no so it really um grow our economic status Next, we have spiritual benefits of outdoor recreation. When we say pos- positive outdoor experiences, it can really stir up spiritual values. Being one with nature brings certain calmness with a person. It strengthens an individual as it heals, as it rejuvenates, at, as it like suits the body and the soul. So it kind of marilax ka. Spiritual aspect. So, these are the other benefits of outdoor recreation. What are the important things that should be remembered when participating in an outdoor activity? So, it has been established earlier that outdoor recreation is an inter- interaction between man and nature. The interaction should come with care and respect. So, dapat natay care asa sa wildlife, respect asa. Satanan. It is important that in using and enjoying what nature offers, an equal responsibility in conserving and preserving must be consciously employed by the people. For example, nagkuan mo, nagkoral, nagkoral, nagsnorkling mo, and then ang tanatanaw mong coral, o niya inyong giguba ang coral, you know? Uh, so, Dilita magingana. Everyone can continue to go back, and we have always remember this: we have future generations. And please let them experience the great things in nature that the current generation has. The leave no trace seven principles. Uh, natagitawag og leave no trace seven principles so this is a set of universal outdoor ethics that guides one in the activities to do with nature it also provides the framework for making decisions in outdoor recreation so taken from the leave no trace center for outdoor ethics official website 
So these are the principles. Principle number one. Plan ahead and prepare. So before ka mudong sa isa ka lugar, check if your planned activities permitted. Waka kaya ba bawal day mudong dito? No? Make sure to know the rules, to know the guidelines and safety procedures they have set. Some places require permits. Dapat na kay permit before ka musud ani. Dapat na kay clearance so sa ka musud ani. No? So plan ahead and prepare. Make sure you have the needed equipment for your activity and the skills needed to undertake the activity. For example, wala kay pospuro, wala kay fire, di ka kay ba mo gama og fire, magunsa man ka didto, wala kay pagkaon, you know? So, skills are really needed. Plan how to cope when emergency arises. Check the weather forecast and be prepared for changing weather conditions. You have to learn when areas are most crowded and mo avoid na lang taan ang mga times. Minimize environmental impact and for safety reasons, keep your group number small. Kung daghan mo, it's really hard. It's really hard to control. It's really hard to head count. It's really hard. Asa naman tong isa? Asa naman? Okay, so as much as possible, keep your group number small. Repack food. Let's repack food to minimize our waste. When trekking, dapat natay maps, dapat natay compass, no? Para maka-avoid the some markings or leaving of marks on rocks and the like. So magdanan tadaan og maps and compass. Principle number 2. Travel and camp on durable surfaces. So Walk, run, bike, or camp on durable surfaces like established tracks, established rocks, and dry gases. Avoid walking on kanabito mga so soft nga surfaces like mga soft nga mga plants. You, know, you must, you might be trample mo na uh, on a young tree, you no. Know, mga young tree. So, ayan na lang ninyo na sila uh, tumbi. No? It will cause vegetation damage. No. Another one. Use existing trails or campsites. No need to build a new campsite that will alter the environment. So, as much as possible, kung magkampo si isa ka kuan, dapat walay ma-alter niya. Basin maghimo na magbalay dira sa forest. No? Dapat walay ma-alter sa si environment. To avoid erosion, walk in single file in the middle of the tray. Oh, kabantay mo ng mga movies, they walk in single file. Nga ano na? The reason is to avoid erosion, soil erosion. Avoid places where impacts are just beginning to show. When camping, keep the campsite small and discreet. Camp at least 200 feet from the lakes. Listen, camp at least 200 feet from the lakes and rivers to protect the waters. Okay? So, that's the principle number two. Travel and camp on durable surfaces. Number three. Hmm. Pack it in, pack it out. This means everything you brought should be brought back with you, including the leftover food or fruit peel. Nothing should be left. No, nothing should be left. Okay, dapat walay mahibilin. Dapat walay trace nga nag-camping ka dito. Okay? When camping, cat holes are dug. Pila ka inches deep. No? Sama na. Asa pila ka inches deep from the soil nga gitapakan ninyo. That must be 6 to 8 inches deep for human waste and cover just the same with soil and weeds or leaves on top. Okay, ang atong human waste dapat i lubong na to 6 to 8 inches deep. Pag kahuman na na, i-cover ninyo with soil and leaves. Dishes. Dishes should be washed 200 feet away from lakes or rivers and use biodegradable soap. Mag-use of the biodegradable soap. Principle number 4. Leave what you find. Examine arco archaeological structures, 
mga daan nga mga walls and other heritage artifacts but do not touch nor leave marks on them leave nature as you found them do not take any plant do not take rocks plants or marine animal with you wala na turtle kit kay ang turtle dad unay nako sa ano ah that is not allowed leave what you find avoid introducing non native plants and animals do not build structures do not build furniture or dig trenches leave what you find that's the number 4 principle Number five, minimize campfire impacts. We will use lightweight stove for cooking. Ayaw po mo, ayaw mo pagdala o mga bugat kayo nga mga uh, stoves. No. Because campfires can cause lasting impacts. If fires are permitted, use fire rings or mound fires that are already set up. Keep fires small and use only sticks from the ground that can be broken by hand. Okay? So, ayaw mo kanang gamit anang, ayaw mo paggama o dako nga siga. Why? Because, may times nga dili na takakontrola na. Okay? No burning of plastics or other substances that emit toxic fumes. Oh, ayaw mo pag um, kung ano, mga chinelas. No, any plastics. Burn all wood to ash and make sure fires are completely out. Scatter the cool ash. Principle, that is principle number five, minimize campfire impacts. Principle number six, respect wildlife. Observe wild animals from a distance and they should be avoided during sensitive times such as nesting or they are with their um, kanang young na ilang anak no so observe wild animals from a distance do not feed wild animals or birds as it is not their natural food no the food might damage their health wa ka kay bawon sa di ilang gipangkaon wa kay bawon sa ilang imnon no other um or katong ilang mga gipangkaon gipanghatag ninyo it can really alter their natural behaviors pwede makapastress nila yung anak betaw so pwede po na, makapa-expose sila ha, sa ilang mga predators no? so you're, we are going to protect wildfire, wildlife and protect your food as well by storing and kanang isecure ni mo siya okay in case you decide to bring your pets along make sure it is allowed and you can control them otherwise do not bring them with you okay Principle number seven, be considerate of other visitors. Respect people who live, respect people who work in the countryside. Respect other visitors and let them have a momentous experience as well. For example, nice sunlight, a uh, nice sunset, oh, namo sa, namo sa hills. Mm, grabe, oy, 30 minutes na good siya nagkuan, nag picture picture at nga uh, part, no? And then, anang apart, murag lamik ka ayo ang kuha. So, let's respect other visitors. Let's give them um, their time po to use that specific area. No? Allow the sound of nature prevail, not your noise or radio. Oh, mm, you know, ga camping camping, yun yung mag, mag kuan, mag kanta kanta, og love scars, kusug ka ayo. You know, be considerate of other visitors. Be courteous. Camp away from trails and other visitors para naamoy privacy. Okay? So, that is principle number seven. Be considerate of other visitors. So, these are the leave no trace seven principles according to the Center of Outdoor Ethics. One, plan ahead and prepare. Two, travel and camp on durable surfaces. Three, dispose of waste properly. 4. Leave what you find. 5. Minimize campfire impacts. 6. Respect wildlife. 7. Be considerate of other visitors. That's all for today. I hope you learned something from this session. After watching this video, comment down at least 5 takeaways from the lesson. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to contact me through my 
email tbonggay at hnu.edu.ph or my Facebook account, Twinkle May Bonggay. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you and God bless you all. See you soon.